Greetings all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is July 31st, 2023. Be sure to check out my recent conversation with Dr. Nadine Sullivan, which I personally found very interesting. See my conversations playlist for that episode and others like it. I will also soon start sending out alerts when new episodes are published, so please add yourself to my contact list to make sure you receive those. Today I want to talk about something that I have thought about for a very long time, but lately it's been at the forefront of my mind. A lot. It's actually a very simple concept. It's so simple, in fact, that it's a bit baffling that I even need to express this. I often wonder why this isn't so obvious <laughs> to everyone, but apparently it's not. And that is that we desperately and urgently need to redefine what is criminal behavior, meaning that certain types of behavior would lead to actual criminal prosecution. For example, many people could be ticketed, fined, or even charged for what are in the big scheme of things very trivial or inconsequential infractions. Just think about it. One of your brake lights is burnt out. You fail to turn on a turning signal. You jaywalk. You grow vegetables in your front yard. Someone steals a loaf of bread. In many places, you can still be prosecuted for something as simple as having a joint or pot on your person. And yet, in the corporate world or in political spheres, you can engage in activities that are seriously harmful to thousands and maybe even millions of people. And in some cases, you can commit acts that will harm people for generations in the form of certain toxic pollutants like forever chemicals or industrial activity or carcinogenic fracking compounds that you inject into the actual earth and which may leach out into the water table, affecting them for thousands of years, or nuclear waste or whatever the case may be. In rare cases, some of these kinds of acts can result in fines, but it seems to me that the penalties associated with such actions are often not even remotely commensurate with the harm or damage that they cause. The climate emergency is a classic example. We are now dealing with the environmental consequences that the fossil fuel industry knew would result, and they've known for decades, and yet they are still conducting business as usual, for the most part. The scale of the harm is mind-bogglingly large and will affect the entire planet for many generations, if not millennia. The fact that these kinds of activities occur in the first place is astonishing, but that so many of them can occur on such a large scale without any meaningful consequences is even more mind-boggling. Here's another example. Last night, and I'm recording this on July 30th, last night I listened to a podcast from Reveal. Reveal is produced by the Center for Investigative Reporting. And this episode, which makes you just want to smash your head on the desk, was about how in the state of Arizona, they sold land to Saudi and UAE corporate interests. And because of the way water is managed, or completely unmanaged, in Arizona, the Saudis drilled down into the water table to grow alfalfa and hay that they would then export back to Saudi Arabia or the UAE to supply their dairy industry. So they took what was formerly desert 
they drill down into the aquifer and they use all the water to grow crops on a very large scale to send back to the Middle East. The context is really important here. The issue is that Arizona is running out of water and the aquifers are being depleted at something like five feet a year. So the wells of surrounding properties and local residents are going dry because these companies are sucking up all the water and it costs like $30 a foot to drill deeper wells, which most locals can't afford. So the local people and communities are panicking because they're starting to run out of water. And if their wells go dry, their properties are almost worthless. So not only are they running out of water, but they're going to lose the value of their property. And of course, the region has been suffering from unprecedented human-caused climate change-related droughts, which are the direct result of the oil industry, which is where the Middle East is getting all this money. <laughs> so, so that's bad enough. And there are no regulations that will protect these people. Large cities in Arizona are also starting to worry about water. The state is nowhere near the ocean, so desalinization is clearly not an option. But wait, it gets even worse. The Arizona State Pension Fund financed the purchase of these properties, so they were using the money that the citizens of Arizona have invested in their retirement, which was used to use up all the water that they are utterly reliant upon. You couldn't write a script like this because people would think it was too absurd. It is mind-bogglingly insane. But to me, this is kind of a metaphor for this whole issue I'm talking about here, which is, why on earth do we allow crap like this to happen in the first place? Stuff like this is going on all the time. That's just one example. Of course, as usual, I will put a link to that Reveal podcast in my episode description. You have to listen to it. It's literally insane. This example, to me, epitomizes this mentality, this paradigm of how we are allowing people to profit from destroying our biosphere, the one which our literal survival is completely dependent upon. Coral reefs are literally dying. We're facing a completely unprecedented human-caused global mass extinction event. Historic heat, drought, wildfires, floods, the polar ice caps are melting, Greenland is melting, I could go on and on and on, and all of this is because we have allowed corporations and people who are chasing profit and in the process are wrecking our biosphere. And yes, I am aware that for many years people have been trying to put into law a concept called ecocide, where, for example, out of control widespread deforestation would be considered a crime in international court, but there's been hardly any progress made in that regard. Not only that, but the corporate sector has been financing, for example, in the United States, a lot of Republican policies which can be directly linked to the attempts to overthrow democracy itself. And we allow them to do this. It's legal. It should not be legal. Activities and actions that threaten the welfare of humanity and the planet should be aggressively prosecuted. These should be crimes that are taken very seriously. 
If we don't do what I am suggesting here, right now, and that very few people are even talking about, our civilization is doomed. And I'm getting strong chills saying that right now. We need to codify into law that you cannot engage in actions or activities that threaten the welfare of the biosphere, society, or humanity as a whole. The things that are happening right now are literally deranged. And it's all just so that a handful of completely morally and ethically bankrupt and deluded people can make money. These people need to be treated like the adolescents that they are. The fact that we allow them to engage in these kinds of activities, like I said, is completely crazy. It's really very simple. We need to start asking ourselves how it is and why some people are allowed to act in such grossly irresponsible and negligent ways without being penalized for it. Meanwhile, like I said, you can get ticketed for jaywalking or get a criminal record for doing something that is many orders of magnitude less serious. The people doing the kinds of things I'm talking about are criminals. We think about mob bosses being criminals. These people are way smarter than mob bosses because they're acting criminally, but they're doing so within the boundaries of the law, apparently. So we need to change the laws, period, because there is a huge chunk of humanity that are completely irresponsible and whose actions are literally threatening our survival. There's a word that begins with T, it ends with ism that comes to mind, but I hesitate to use it here because it will trigger the algorithms. Anyway, that's what I wanted to get off my chest. I read a lot, and every day I read things that are completely jaw-dropping, and we are not even talking about the fundamental root core aspect of it, and the fact that we're not, to me, is baffling. Our society honors and respects people who make a lot of money. Now, some of them do so legitimately and honorably, but there are a lot of people, a lot, in our societies who make their money in destructive, dangerous, and harmful ways. And these people should not be lauded. On the contrary, we need to be much more discerning about who we respect and why, or who we don't. I'm quite certain that it was at least 15 or 20 years ago where I started to exclaim to people in my circle at the time that we urgently needed to weed out sociopaths and psychopaths from positions of power or authority in our society. If we do not prevent these kinds of people who lack conscience or conscientiousness from those sorts of positions, they will take us all down with them. One of the things that bothers me about some people on the left is that they seem to be quite naive when it comes to dealing with these kinds of people. I know from my own personal experience that the only way that, for example, you can deal with a bully is to stand up to them. You cannot be complacent, neither can you appease them. They will walk all over you and destroy you if you don't stand up to them. Based on my past experience, that's just a fact. This is why, for example, it is so important that we not allow Putin to get away with his crimes against humanity. We have to take a stand. We had to do the same thing in World War II. We didn't have a choice, and we don't have a choice here either. These completely delusional and dangerous people will destroy us all if we let them. This is the dark side. The dark side does not play by the same rules we play by, and it is extremely naive to think they do, or that they respect us or our welfare. They don't. They have no conscience. 
if I was running the world, these people would be prosecuted for crimes against humanity. It's on a completely different scale than your normal crimes. You'll see reports in the press about how somebody stole something or caused some financial harm that was worth $50,000, $80,000. What I'm talking about is billions, hundreds of billions, and even trillions of dollars. It's not even in the same universe, and yet these people can do it and get away virtually scot-free. At the very worst, they will be fined some amount that is still trivial in comparison to the harm they've actually caused. In my opinion, the only way to effectively combat this type of criminal sociopathic activity is to claw back any benefits or profits that were derived from that activity, period. So if somebody does something that is significantly harmful to society or the biosphere and they profited from it, you have to go back and take from them any benefits they received from that activity, not just a fine or prison time, but any of their assets or profits that related to that activity. That would act as a very strong deterrent for people to engage in these kinds of dangerous and harmful activities. To balance out the harm, insofar as it's possible, that they have created. If you're dealing with actors in a foreign country who are acting irresponsibly, then you can sanction them through trade and economic policies, much like we're doing with Russia now, and over time you close off all the loopholes. That should do it. To be clear, I don't want us to have to do these kinds of things, but because some people are so immature, malignantly narcissistic, and irresponsible, we don't have a choice. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way things are. People need to understand and be very clear about the fact that these crimes are vastly more serious than homicide. We need new laws for a new era. I'll put links in the episode description to any related content. And if you're interested in a reading with me, I'll put a link to that as well. Many sincere thanks to everyone who supports me, especially my YouTube members. Thank you very much. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.